down trees uh, and also help repair things that may have been damaged as a byproduct of that. And so I'd like to send that referral to Mr. Early and then he can communicate that to the staff to investigate the opportunity to see if we can get some federal relief, maybe FEMA dollars, I'm not for sure. But we definitely need to look and ask the question if we can receive some assistance as an indigent city. Councilman Neely, I'm, I'm going to recognize your referral, but again, I'm going to request uh, from, from my colleagues. We have a number of speakers here tonight. I received a number of concerns from residents that were at our last meeting that had to wait so long or they left. Understood. If we could just wait till the end of the meeting after all the speakers speak, make our referrals and make comments, and I will call on council members at that time. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Next speaker is Barbara Griffiths Wilson. Ms. Wilson. Good evening, Barbara. Yeah, good evening, and Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, there are so many issues beset in the city of Flint and Genesee County as a whole. And this issue, particular issue, has been puzzling me, so I just thought I'd do a little homework and see what was going on with it. I want to ask the council some questions, and the first question is, is the council aware of the racial discrimination lawsuit that is threatening the city of Flint by Operation Unification Charles Young regarding NSP1 and NSP2? And are you aware that prior to the EM emergence that OU was financially secure and was sufficient in executing any re reimbursable contract? Also, are you aware that Smith Village was taken on the pretense of their work being inferior, yet they have never received a citation from the city or HUD regarding NSP1 or NSP2? In addition to this, there is supportive documentation of the city's private meetings and minutes regarding NSP1 by which the emergency manager states on record that the homes were in great condition, that the homes were in great condition, and that and the basements, the homes in the basements were in great condition, and that Mr. Young had done a great job. Also, in June of 2013, the EM sent a message to the governor that stated the homes were in excellent condition and the project was on target. This was the workmanship of Mr. Young. Last but not least, in a meeting with Community Justice Department. The previous EM said, was asked why he would not com communi communicate or pay Mr. Young for the six months. And he said that he came to kill the project. Are you aware of that? Thank you, Barbara. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Aaron Dion. Aaron Dion. Good evening, Aaron. Good evening, Council. Oh. Chief Tolbert, Mayor, Emergency will you, Manager. Will you pull the mic up so that everyone can hear you? Thank you. Uh, my name is Aaron Dion. I don't live in the city, but I do own about 40 rental properties, most of them on the east side, some of them on the west side. I've spent the last nine years uh, building my portfolio, you might say, although right now I'm getting kind of uh, scared about some things falling apart. Um, things that I don't really have control over, although I'm doing my best. Um, three items, actually. I might tell you 10 days ago, no, just this past week, Friday, uh, a tenant of mine inquired about maybe moving to Flint Township because some property owner had moved out of the property next to him, and there's a new family there that's dealing drugs. I said, well, call 911. Well, they don't come, he says. And I, I think I believe that. He says day and night, all hours, their, their uh, customers are coming up honking the horn in the road. I can't believe that would happen in normal conditions, but I guess they're, they're so brazen, people don't get in trouble for so many things, they don't, uh, they don't worry about the police catching them. Um, <clears throat> I've had difficulty evicting some tenants that actually there were drugs removed from the property from a police, police officer. I went about the course of action I believe was the best. I had to subpoena the police officer to be there. That's, that is crazy. The police should be telling me, you come to court, we need to con convict this person and put them in jail and have better people in the city of Flint. Things are backwards in that regard. I think the city police would 
be much helped if they would listen to and acknowledge complaints and offers of help and information from the landlords, business owners, uh, residents, people like this. We really do have some knowledge that we can give you. Um, hopefully, Chief Tolbert can change the mindset of some of his officers with regards to that. And why am I worried about my tenant leaving? Well, <laughs> on that same street, we get back to the 10 days ago, <clears throat> I was putting my materials and my tools in my truck, and I noticed somebody a few doors down parked on the wrong side of the road. They actually, at 4 o'clock on a Friday afternoon, walked up to the front door of a house, stole the aluminum storm door off of it. Well, I promptly called 911, got the license number, and long story short, I found them, not the police, I found them at a scrapyard over by Center Road and Robert T. Longway. Luckily, the police were able to show up, but because they didn't get there soon enough, they say they didn't have enough evidence against them, they let the guys go. As far as I'm concerned, that vehicle should have been seized right then and there. I'm not sure exactly of the process, but I'm not in the world that I would really need to worry about it too much, being a law-abiding citizen, but I think some more should have happened. Um, <clears throat> What happens when my property goes vacant? And maybe the drug dealers next door, a passerby, who knows who it's gonna be, probably a neighbor, breaks into my house and takes anything aluminum, storm windows, storm doors, plumbing, wiring, furnace, water heater, you guys know what's taken. And I've dealt with the scrap metal issue for way too long. Luckily, I figured out how to install electronic security systems, and that's why I sleep at night. And that's why certain people haven't seen videos of scrap metal theft aftermath in three years or so from me. I've been a lot luckier, let's say, with security systems protecting myself when I couldn't get help from the police. And I will give Chief Tolbert, walking away, <laughs> some credit. I've heard some good things. He wants to change some things. It sounds really good compared to the uh, situation we've had previous to that. Now, what else causes me grief with regards to having that property vacant? Water deposit for tenants and the water rates. These two items are driving the people away from the city because the tenants can't get the water turned on. I keep a log of the people that call me when I have a house for rent, and usually rents in about a month after about 20 people have called, and maybe I've shown it to five, maybe eight people if I um, remember correctly. Now it's more than triple that number. It used to be about a month or two maybe it would be vacant. Now it's four to six months and still going. So I don't know what the top end of that's gonna be. I'm, I'm afraid of that. Um, I've done what I can. I've reduced the rents. I've even taken only the security deposit to move someone in with the addition of a receipt <coughs> for them getting the water turned on in their name. I'm not even taking the first month's rent right there at move-in where I used to and where as a business person, I should be able to demand that. I'm, I'm letting it go for payments over the next couple months. And I've only done that twice since September. I've only had two, tenant, two new tenants lease up with me since then. So beginning of January hasn't been so good yet. Hopefully, when people start getting their taxes back, uh, maybe in February also, things will pick up. But it just seems to be going worse and worse every year. Every year, I ask myself, could it get any worse? Hopefully, this next year will be better, but it just keeps getting worse. So I think we need your help, Council. We're working with the City of Flint Water Department and the Police Department expressly uh, working on these matters. I'm. I'm here as a landlord. Um, I don't think I mentioned I'm actually the vice president of the Landlords Association of Genesee County. Uh, I and we are here to work with you. We want you to work with us. If you have a matter where you think, hey, property owners might have an interest in this, let us know what we think. That way, if we come to agreement before a matter is passed, there, there won't be as many lawsuits, hopefully. We can all be on the same boat. Please sum up. You got one minute. That's the end. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, our next speaker, Madam Clerk.
Our next speaker is John Billings. Mr. Billings. Good evening, John. Good evening, John Billings, 408 Grace Mount. Uh, I'm up here to uh, speak about two things, really. First, uh, the snowing, the plowing of the streets. I lived in this city over 40 years. I seen way more snowstorms than what we got this last couple weeks. The city had never been shut down in a week. Our streets have never took a week to be clean. My neighbor was cleaning the street out, not his driveway when he died. And we could have got the street clean because his driveway was clean. What he did when he banged out his driveway, same problem I'm having. We got water running from a water break. It builds a hill, and the hill freezes, turns into ice. So when you go down, you're doing one or two things when you're going in and out the driveway. You're either tearing up the back end of your car or the front end of your car. I submitted a complaint for that. But it still got ice and stuff on it. So I say that to say this. If we get our streets clean, we do as our driveway, we might have prevented that death, that man from dying. All that street had to do was be clean. From the street to his driveway. His driveway was clean. My driveway be clean. We cleaned our driveway. Now we got these trees that fell down. They need to be picked up. We're trying to build us for picking up the trees. But we don't fix income. A lot of people can't afford that. So it seems like me, the trees should be included in the plight. They're trash. And... Last but not least, I like to speak on my councilman. We the we the people voted here in.